Here in this code sample, we use the Twitter API. If you browse the Twitter website, you will find a link for developers where you can find detailed information about how to use the Twitter API. The, one of the simplest way to use that API is for getting the tweets of a specific user. You just need to browse a specific URL address with a query string passing over the name of the very specific uh, user on Twitter you want to get its uh, tweets. So if I take this URL address and enter it here in my web browser, uh, an HTTP request is sent from the web browser to the Twitter uh, ser server side and in return we get an XML document that lists all recent uh, tweets. As you can see we have the status XML elements and each one of the status XML element has a text XML element and this is the tweet itself. As you can see we can get more information but let's focus first on the texts, on the tweet itself. So let's get back to the code sample. Uh, the first thing will be creating a URL object that represents this very specific URL address, a URL address that includes um, a query string with the name of the Twitter user we want to get its uh, tweets. Then, on the URL object we can invoke the open connection method that returns a reference for a HTTP URL connection object, but actually we get in return, according to the definition of open connection, uh, a reference of another type. So, because we know we, we are getting a HTTP URL connection object, we can uh, do this uh, very specific uh, casting. The reason we know that it is a HTTP URL connection object is because of the URL address that starts with uh, HTTP, meaning that the object open connection returns its reference is a, a, an object that represents a connection created using the HTTP protocol. So we will just do this simple casting. Then here we can invoke the set request method in order to configure the method of the HTTP request we want to create. Each request in the HTTP protocol has a, a method and the method can be get, post, delete, uh, there are many options. In this code sample, uh, the RESTful web service API uh, we, we use from Twitter, if you go over the documentation, it uh, dictates us to uh, try and connect this URL address using an HTTP uh, request that use the get method. Calling the connect function on the HTTP URL connection object, we actually initiate the connection. And then we can imagine how um, underneath a, an HTTP request is sent from this code just as if it was sent from a web browser to the Twitter server and then there is a response, an XML document we want to parse. Calling the get input stream, get us an input stream object we can use to go over the response. Because we know the response is XML document, we can parse that uh, response using uh, one of the parsers uh, Java has to offer us. One of them is a parser that 
um, was developed based on the DOM specification, Document Object Model specification. Uh, that specification is about how an XML document, just like this, can be translated into a graph of objects. And it is fairly simple to imagine that um, for each status XML element there is an object that um, holds references for other objects such as the text element which is also um, represented using an object. So in this case you can imagine that there is an object that represents the statuses uh, XML element and it holds references for objects that represent the status XML element and each object that represents a status XML element holds references for objects that represents uh, the created at XML element, the ID XML element, text ele XML element, etc. All childs of the status and so on. Now we need to get a document object an object that represents the entire uh, XML document. The first thing would be calling the static method new instance that was defined in document builder factory. Calling that function we shall get in return a document builder factory object. Now that we have a document builder factory object we can invoke the new document builder on it in order to get a document builder and once we get a document builder we can invoke the method parse on it passing over the input stream through which we can read all data that came back from the Twitter server and get a document object that represents the entire XML document we received from the Twitter server. Now the next step uh, can be for example calling the get elements by tag name. Calling this function on a document object passing over the string text, a string which is actually a name of a well-known XML document, XML element, as you can see we have the text XML element as a child for each status XML element. So when I call the get elements by tag name and pass over the string text I get in return a node list object, an object that actually holds references for um, node objects that each one of them represents a specific uh, XML element, a specific text XML element. So we can imagine that this variable actually holds a reference for an object which is kind of a list, an object that holds references for node objects that each one of them represents a specific text XML element like this one and this one etc. We can call the get length method in order to know how many node objects the node list object holds their references and then we can use a simple loop in order to go over those node objects. Each iteration list.item or let's say calling the item method on the node list object passing over a number starting with uh, zero will return us, will get us uh, the reference for a specific node object. So actually each iteration list.item uh, passing over i get us 
the reference for a specific node object that represents a specific text XML element in this B XML document. Now, if you call the function get first child on a node object that represents a specific text XML element, you will get a reference for another node object which is the child of the text XML element and in this case you will get a node object that represents this string. So we can actually summarize and say that this returns a reference for a node object that represents a specific string. Now when you have a node object that represents a specific string and you invoke the getNodeValue method on it, you get the string itself. So when I try to execute this code sample, as you can see the output includes all of those strings we can find in our XML document starting with uh, this one today was the last meeting blah 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 here it is